Stangibalisco here to talk about a topic that you will find in my book Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics 5th edition. A link to the Amazon.com page for this book will appear in the description of this video. The concept that I'm going to talk about today is photoelectric proximity sensing. It's a method of detecting, particularly used by robots, of how close a nearby object is. But that nearby object has to have light scattering properties. It can't be a shiny surface like a mirror. You'll see why in just a second. What it comprises is a modulated light source like a say 1000 Hertz tone generator modulates a laser so that the laser beam turns out to be a 100 uh, pardon me a 1000 Hertz modulated laser beam then we have a photo detector with an amplifier that has a resonant sensitivity of 1000 Hertz so that it will respond only to light that is modulated at that particular frequency. Then of course it goes to a microcomputer and a robotic locomotion system which can tell a robot to do things like fly a kite, stand on a surfboard on a windy day and go kite surfing. Sort of a hybrid between jumping in the lake and flying the kite. Just a fancy thought. I've actually seen that done. I've actually seen kite surfing done in, when I lived in Miami Beach. Somebody came in one morning from God knows where on the easterly prevailing winds, po possibly all the way from the Bahamas with a huge parafoil kite standing on a surfboard. Like snowboarding, kite surfing. Well, that's what this will tell the robot to do, provided that a proper surface gets close to these, uh, the laser and the detector. And that is the key to this whole system. Now, you may ask, why modulate the laser? Why not just let it be an ordinary laser? And the reason for that is it'll keep the photo detector from responding to any stray light except light that happens to be modulated at the frequency of the laser, in this case 1000 Hertz. So that makes it what you might call a tone selective photoelectric proximity sensor. The reason that a shiny surface won't work, like a mirror for example, is that unless this modulated light source is directed straight at the object at a 90 degree angle makes an angle of incidence of exactly 90 degrees or um, I guess physicists would say zero degrees but unless it hits at a right angle to the surface and bounces back to the photo detector or close to whatever angle it is that it needs to bounce back and hit this photo detector the photo detector isn't going to see anything so it has to scatter the light a good uh, example would be a concrete wall. So the next time you see a robot approaching a white painted concrete wall, suddenly stop, turn around, get a pair of foil kite and a surfboard, head out to the nearest lake, make certain it's a windy day, and kite surf across the lake, you'll know that it was probably using a photoelectric proximity sensor such as this. That uh, is in contrast to the capacitive proximity sensor in which case the approaching or nearby object must be an electrical conductor. This doesn't have to be. It can be a like I said a painted white painted concrete wall or something anything that'll scatter light. It doesn't have to even be flat as long as it will scatter the light. But this tone generator 
and the proper frequency response is important to distinguish the light reflected from the surface originally coming from the laser from other stray light otherwise the robot would go around looking for kites and surfboards and lakes and windy days endlessly uncontrollably you'd have to turn it off <laughs> but seriously that is how photoelectric proximity sensing basically works incidentally I am a bona fide amateur radio operator call sign W1GV whiskey one good vibrations you will find a few books about ham and shortwave radio on Amazon if you'll just search on that site or Barnes and Noble or any other popular site and on this YouTube channel you'll find at least three playlists <clears throat> devoted entirely to ham and shortwave radio so I will say 73 which means best regards in ham radio jargon and so long from W1GV again a link to the uh, Amazon.com page for this book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, edition number five, will be found in the description of this video. And again, so long.